Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Spark Summit East 2017, brought to you by Databricks. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're here in Boston at snowy Boston. This is Spark Summit. Uh, Spark Summit does an East Coast version, they do a West Coast version, they've got one in, in Europe this year. Uh, the Cube has been a partner with Databricks um, as the live broadcast partner. Our friend Bill Peterson is here. He's the head of partner marketing at MapR. Bill, good to see you again. Thank you, thanks for having me. So how's the show going for you? It's give great. Us, give us the vibe, yeah. we're kind of winding down day two. It, it is, uh, the show's been great. We've got uh, a lot of traffic coming by, a lot of deep technical questions, which is, you know. The, the Hardcore. Sh it is, show, it is, which is, you know, so I, I spend a lot of time there smiling and going, yeah, talk to him. <laughs> 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 um, but it's great, you know, we're getting those deep technical questions and uh, it's great. We actually just got one on uh, Luster which, you know, I had to think for a minute. Oh, HPC, right? Yeah. It, it was like way back in there. Craze on the floor. That yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Um, but a lot of our customers as well, you know, yeah. so uh, United Health Group, uh, Wells Fargo, Amex coming by, uh, which is great to see them and talk to them, but also they've got some deep technical questions for us. So it's, it's moving the needle with existing customers, but also new business, which is great. So I, I ask a basic question. Yeah. What is MapR, right? MapR started in the early days, a Hadoop distro, yep. you know, vendor, one of the big three. When somebody says to you, what is MapR? What do my, you say? My answer today is MapR is an enterprise software company that delivers a converged data platform. That converged data platform consists of a file system, a NoSQL database, a Hadoop distribution, a Spark distribution, and a set of data management tools. And as a customer of MapR, you get all of those, you can turn them all on if you'd like. You can just turn on the file system, for example, if you wanted to just use the file system for storage. But the enterprise software piece of that is all the hardening we do behind the scenes on things like snapshots, mirroring, data governance, uh, multi-tenancy, ease of use, performance. All of that baked into the, to the uh, solution or the platform as we're calling it now. So as, as you're kind of alluding to, a year ago now, we kind of got out of that business of saying, okay, we're, you know, lead 100% with Hadoop, and then while we have your attention, or if we don't, oh, oh hey, wait, we got all this other stuff in the, in the basket we want to show you. We, we went the platform play and said, we're, we're going to include everything, and it's all there, and then the baseline underneath is the hardening of it, you know, the file system, the database, and the streaming product, actually, which I didn't mention, um, which, is, which is kind of the, the core, and everything, everything plays off of there. And that, honestly, has been uh, really well received, and it, it just, I feel, makes it's so much easier, that, because we, it happened here. We get the question, okay, how, how are you different from Cloud Era or Hortonworks? And some of it here, given the nature of the attendees, is very technical, but there's been a couple of business users that I've talked to, and when I talk about us as an enterprise software company delivering a, a, a plethora of solutions versus just Hadoop, you can see the light going on sometimes in people's eyes, and I got it, today, earlier, I had no idea you had a file system, which to me just drives me insane yeah. because you know, <laughs> the file system is pretty cool, right? Um, well, and you guys are early on in investing in that file system and recovery capabilities and all the- Two, two years in stealth writing it. Nasty, right? gnarly, hard stuff right. that was kind of right. poo-pooed early on, yeah. but yeah. You know, MapR was never patient about waiting for the sort of open source community to just figure it out and catch up. You always just said, all right, we're going to solve this problem and go sell. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and I'm glad you said that. I want to be clear, we're, we're not giving up on open source or anything, right? That's, that's open source is still a big piece. 50% uh, of our engineers' time is working on open source projects, right? That's still super important to us. And then back in November-ish last year, we announced the uh, MapR ecosystem packs, which is our effort to help our customers that are using open source components to stay current, right? Because that's a pain in the butt, right? Right. Uh, so this is a, a set of packages that uh, have a whole bunch of components. We lead with Spark and Drill, and that was by customer request that they were having a hard time keeping current with Spark and Drill. So the packs allow them to come up to current level within the converged data platform for all of their open source components. And that's something we're going to do at dot levels, so I, forget, I think we're at 2.1 or 2 now. The dot levels will bring you up, up 
on everything. And then the big ones, like the 3.0s, the 4.0s, will bring spark and drill current. And so we're going to kind of leapfrog those. So that's still a really important part of our business, and, and we don't want to forget that part. Um, but what we're trying here to do is, is, via the platform, is deliver all of that in one entity, right? So, yeah, the converged data platform is relevant, presumably because you've got you know, the history of Hadoop, is you've got all these different components, and yeah. you've got to cobble them together, and they're different interfaces, and right. different environments. You're trying to unify that, and you yeah. have unified yeah. that, right? Yeah. So, what is your customer feedback with regard to yeah. the converged data platform? Yeah, so it, it's, it's a great question, because for existing customers, it was like, you know, thank you, right? It was one of those, mm -hmm. right? Because we're listening. Actually, Again, glad you said that. Um, this week, in addition to Spark Summit, we're doing our yearly customer advisory board. So we've got, like a lot of vendors, we've got a 30 plus company customer advisory board that we bring in and we sit down with them for a couple of days and they give us feedback on you know, what we should and shouldn't be doing and we're directional and all that, which is super important. And that's where a lot of this converged data platform came out of is the need for you know, there's just too much. It's kind of confusing. We would, and then, you know, I'll give the example of streams, right? We came out with our streaming product last year, and, you know, okay, you've got, I'm using Hadoop, I'm using your file system, I'm using NoSQL. Now you're adding streams. This is great, but, you know, now, like MEP, right, the, the, the ecosystem packages, I have to keep everything current. You know, this is, you got to make it easier for me. You got to make my life easier for me. So, so for existing customers, it's a it's a stay current. I I like this. You know the model. I can turn on and off what I want when I want. Great great model for them. And then for new existing business, for new business, it gets us out of that Hadoop only mode, right? I, I kind of jokingly call us Hadoop plus 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 plus, right? <laughs> we we keep adding solutions and add it to a single cohesive data platform that we keep updated. And as I mentioned here, you know, talking to to new new customers or new prospects or a potential new business, when I when I describe the model, you can just see the light going on and they realize, wow, there's a lot more to this than than I had imagined. I thought you were, you know, I got it earlier today. I thought you guys only did Hadoop, you know, which is a little infuriating, infuriating as a marketer, but I think we're, from a mechanism and a delivery and a message and a story point of view, it, it's really helped. More cube time will help. Uh, <laughs> 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 well played. Uh, it's good to well have played. you back on. Um, okay, so Spark comes along uh, a couple years ago and it was yeah. like, oh, what's going to happen to Hadoop? Okay, so you right. guys embrace Spark. Talk more specifically about Spark. Sure. Where it fits in you sure. know, your platform and the ecosystem yeah. generally. So, you know, uh, Spark, Hadoop, others, as a entity to bring data into the converged data platform, right? That, that's one way to think about it, right? Way oversimplified, obviously, but that's, that's a really great way, uh, I think, to think about it is if, if we're going to provide this platform that you, anybody you know, can query on, you can run analytics against. You know, we, we talk a lot about now converged applications. So taking historical data, taking operational data, so streaming data, right, great example, putting those together, and you could say, use the data lake example if you want, that's fine, but putting them into a converged application in the middle where they overlap, right, kind of typical Venn diagram where they overlap, and that middle part is the converged application. What's feeding that? Well, Spark could be feeding that, uh, Hadoop could be feeding that. Uh, just yesterday we announced a, a, uh, uh, a container for a Docker, right, for containers. That could be feeding into the converged data platform as well. So we look at all of these things as an opportunity for us to manage data and to make data accessible at the enterprise level. And then that enterprise level goes back to what I was talking before. It's got to have all of those things like multi-tenancy and snapshots and mirroring data code. <laughs> excuse me, data governance, security, et cetera. Uh, but Spark is a big component of that, right. right? You know, all of the customers who came by here that I mentioned earlier, which are some really good names for us, are all using Spark to drive data into the converged data platform. So, you know, we, we look at it as, we, we can help them build new applications within converged data platform with that data. So if, whether it's Spark data, Hadoop data, container data, don't, we don't really care. So al along those lines, if, if the focus of intense interest right now is on Spark, yeah. um, and Spark says, oh, and we work with all these 
mm-hmm. databases, data stores, you know, file systems. Right. When you, if you approach a customer who's Spark first, mm. you know, what's the message relative to all the other data stores that they can get to through, you know, that without getting too techy, their their API. Sure. Sure. Well, I, I think as you know, George, we we support a whole bunch of APIs, right? So we. I guess for us, it's the it's the breadth. But right? the, I'm thinking of Spark in particular. If someone says, "I want to run," or specifically, I guess I want to run Databricks, mm-hmm. but I need something underneath it to sure, capture sure. the data yeah. and to manage yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I think that's the beauty of our file system. There, right? You know, we, as I mentioned, uh, you know, if you think about it from a, a architectural point of view, our our file system along the bottom, or it could be our database or a streaming product. But in this instance, that's which, what I'm getting. Yeah, to which all three. Yeah. Uh, Picture that as the bottom layer okay. as your storage, uh, okay. I, I shouldn't say storage layer, but uh, as the bottom layer, right? Because it, it's not just storage, right? It's more than storage, right? Uh, middle layer is maybe some of your open source tools or, and the like, and then above that is what I, I call your data delivery mechanisms, right? Uh, which would be Spark, for example. One bucket, another bucket could be Hadoop, and another bucket could be these microservices we're talking about. I mean, let me draw, let me draw the picture another way using a partner, right? Uh, SAP, right? One of the things we've had some success with SAP is SAP HANA sitting up here, right? SAP would love to have you put all your data in HANA, right? It's probably not going to happen, yeah, good right? Luck. Yeah, good luck, right? Um, but what if you, hey customer, what if you put zero to two years worth of data, historical data in HANA? Okay, maybe the customer starts nodding okay. their head like you just did. Hey customer, what if you put two to five years worth of data in Business Warehouse? And guess what, you already own that, right? You've been an SAP customer for a while, you already have it. Okay, the customer's now really nodding their head, you got their attention, and this, to, to your original question, whether it's Spark or whatever, right? Five plus years, put a map bar. Oh, and then like Hanavora could, could do the query. Well, we can query, up, you drill and query across all of them. Right. Oh, yeah. Including the business. Oh, right. Including the business warehouse. Right. So okay. running on the running in the file system. So you know th- that to me, and you know we do this obviously with, with uh, our joint SAP map our customers. That to me is kind of a really cool vision. And to your original question, if that was Spark at the top feeding it rather than SAP, sure. Okay. Right. Why not? Okay. What can you share with us, Bill, about Business metrics around MapR, however you choose to share it, headcount. Yeah, you yeah. You want to give us gross margins by product? That's great. But, uh, <laughs> actually, we know they're would very. You, high. Would you like revenues? We know too? they're very Dave. high because you're a software company, so that's actually a bad question. <laughs> Operating you, profit by you profit. You don't have to give us yeah. top line revenues. But no, so maybe. what are you guys <laughs> saying publicly about the company, its growth? Sure. It's you know, sure. Yeah, no, that's the fair. latest. Um, so. It's fantastic, right? Number one, right? Um, hiring like crazy. I, we're well north of 500 people now. Um, I actually, you, you want to hear a funny story? I yesterday was texting in the booth with a candidate for my team, back and forth on salary. Did the negotiation, salary negotiation on text right there in the booth <laughs> and closed her. She starts on the 27th. <laughs> Great, congratulations. So I'm very excited about that. Um, so mo- moving along on that, uh, seven, 800 plus customers as we, you know, we talk about. Um, we will be doing our, we just finished our fiscal year on uh, January 31st, so we're on a, a Feb 1, right, yeah. fiscal year. And we always do a m- momentum press release, you know, which will be coming out soon. Um, but every everything, you know, uh, we've hired, again, like crazy as I mentioned, executive ta- staff is all filled in and, you know, built to scale, uh, which we're really excited about. Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about, um, you know, the, the kind of uptake of, convert, you know, used to be of the file system, Hadoop, et cetera, um, um, on, on its own. But now in this, in this one, um, the momentum release we'll be doing, we'll talk about the converged data platform and the, and the uplift we've seen from that. So, you know, we obviously can't talk revenue numbers and the like, but every, everything, David, I got to tell you, you know, we've been doing this a long time. Uh, all of that is just, all moving in the right direction. And then the, the other example I'll give you from my world um, in the 
the partner world. You know, last year I rebranded our partner to the Converged Partner Program, right? Mm -hmm. We're going with this whole Converged thing, right? And we established three levels, elite, preferred, and affiliate with different, different levels there. But there also, um, there's revenue at each, you know, revenue requirements at each level, so elite, preferred, and affiliate. And, you know, there's resell and influence revenues. We have MDF funds, not only from the big guys coming to us, but we're paying out MDF funds now to select partners as well. So all of this stuff I, I always talk about is the maturity of the company, right? We're, we're maturing in our messaging, we're maturing in the, the level of people who are joining, and we're maturing in the customers and the deals, you know, the deal sizes and volumes that we're seeing. So it, it's all moving in, in the right direction. It's great, yeah. awesome, congratulations. Thank you, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. What, um, can you talk about number of customers or number of employees relative to last year? Oh boy, uh, I don't, honestly, George, I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, um, okay. um, I apologize, I don't know the metric, but I know it's north of 500 today of employees and it's like seven, 800 customers. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. And, and a little bit more on this partner, elite preferred and, and affiliate. Affiliate, so, yeah. And you said, what would you call it, the converged, converged partner. partners program? Yeah, yeah. So what's, what are the, some of the details of, of sure. that? Sure, so the elites are, are invite only, right? And those are some of the bigger ones, right? So for us, we're like, inf inf like some examples. Cisco, yeah, SAP, yeah, okay. AWS. Yeah. Um, you know, others, but those those are some of the big ones. And there we're looking at things like um, resell and influence revenue, right? Mm -hmm. We're track. that's how I, I, right, that's what I track in my, in <laughs> I, I always jokingly say at MapBar, even, even though we're kind of a big startup now, I always jokingly say at MapBar, you have three jobs, right? You have the job you were hired for, you have your Thursday night job, and you have your Sunday night job, <laughs> right? So in, my, in the job I was hired for, partner marketing, I track influence and resell revenue, right? So at the elite level, we're, we're doing both, right? We're like Cisco resells us, right? So this S series, right? They, we're in their SKU, their, their uh, sales reps can go sell an S series for big data workloads or analytical workloads, map our on it, off you go, right? And our job then is cashing checks, which I like. I like that, that's a good job to have in this business, right? Um, at the preferred level, it's uh, kind of that next tier of, of big players, but you know, they haven't, we, Revenue thresholds haven't moved into the elite yet. Um, customer, uh, customers, partners in there are like the um, the micro strategies of the world. We're doing a lot with them. Tableau, Talend, uh, mm -hmm. th those a lot of the BI vendors in there, uh, and then the affiliates are are kind of the smaller guys who maybe maybe will do one piece of a campaign during the year with them. So, like, I'll give you an example. Um, Attunity, you guys know those sure. guys right yeah. here? Yeah. Um, yeah. Last year, we were doing a campaign on DWO, Data Warehouse Offload, right? We wanted to bring them in, but this was a map our campaign running for a quarter, right? And we were typical, like a lot of companies, we run four campaigns a year, and then my partner in field stuff kind of opts into that, and we run stuff to support it. And then corporate marketing does something, you know, pretty traditional. But what I try and do is pull these partners into those campaigns. So we did a webinar with uh, um, Attunity as part of that campaign. So that at that, you know, at, at the affiliate level, the lower level, we're, we're not doing a full go to market like we would with the elites at the top, but they're being brought into our campaigns and then, you know, obviously hopefully we, we hope on the other side they're going to pull us in as well. Great, um, last question. Sure, is, yes sir. What, what should we pay attention to? What's coming up? Um, yeah, so. Let's see, we got, we got some events, we got Strata coming yep, up, out and yep. you'll be out, out your way, right? Or out map our way. Uh, I, yeah. on, as, as my Twitter handle says, C11A, yeah, right? Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the Docker announcement we're really excited about, and microservices, right? You'll see more from us on the whole microservices thing. Streaming is still a big one, we think, for this year. Um, you, you guys probably agree. Uh, oh, yeah. That's why we announced the MapR streaming product last year. So again, from a, from a go-to-market point of view and, and kind of putting some meat behind streaming with part, not only MapR, but with partners. So streaming as a component uh, and a delivery model for managing data in CDP. Uh, I think that's a big one. Um, machine learning is something that you know, we're, we're seeing more and more kind of touching us from a number of uh, customers, but also from the partner perspective. So you know, I, I see all the partner requests that come in to join the partner program, and there's been an uptick in the machine learning customers that want to come in and, uh, 
excuse me, partners that want to be talking mm -hmm. to us, which I think is really interesting. Um, Where you would be the sort of prediction serving layer? Exactly, exactly, okay. well, or a data store, right? A lot of them are looking for just an, an easy data store that you know, the MapR file system can do. Okay. Yeah, right. Infrastructure to support that, yeah. You know, whether, you know, commodity, right, the, the whole old promise of Hadoop or just a, a generic file system is, you know, give me easy access to storage on commodity hardware. Yeah. The machine learning. That works. Right, so what the machine learning, the new, or I guess the existing machine learning vendors need an answer for that, right? When the customer asks them, they want just an easy answer, say, oh, we just use MapRFS for that and we're done. Okay, that's fine with me. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. So that's the operational end of that machine learning pipeline. Sure. That we call DevOps for data science. Correct. Right. Okay. And I mean, I guess the nice synergy there is the whole uh, going back to the 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 Docker microservices one, right? The, there's a DevOps component there as well. Yes. So it might be interesting marrying those together. Okay. All right, we got to go, Bill. Great. Thanks very much. Good thanks, to see guys. You again. All right, thank Appreciate you for coming on. All right, George and I will be back to wrap. We're going to do part two of our big data forecast. Right now, so stay with us, right back.